good morning to all good morning am i audible am i audible because uh, today suddenly when i started this uh, stream lab it started to update it so that's why uh, this delay i'm sorry for that am i audible okay so today uh, we will be learning about system identification and its tuning okay we'll be again i am telling we'll be using the uh, concept of uh, classical control we are not going for any advanced control technique because when my requirement is uh, catered by uh, classical control then we need not to go for any advanced or optimized control technique so today we'll be uh, i'll try to cover two uh, broad aspect one is the uh, system identification and its tuning and the second one the commercial drives are available in the market for asynchronous induction machine and how to configure it for v by f control mode then we will be learning uh, in some next class we will be learning about a vector control mode how to configure and all these things so whenever there is no a uh, feedback from the output and we are just giving the excitation to a system it's called open loop control okay but you know in case of uh, open loop control there is there are there is no uh, tight con there, there is no tight control over the output definitely some feedback is required means whatever the excitation i have given by thinking by assuming the uh, by assuming the characteristics or behavior of the plant or system whether exactly it is able to exhibit that output or not okay so system identification is very much important why it is very much important you see for to control the steady state situation is not a matter but to control the uh, transient state is very difficult you say now now i i will give one example so now you are seeing me at night i slept well morning i get up i took tea then my mind is very fresh i am in steady state now seeing me all of you can uh, think that okay sir is looking very good he is a very nice person uh, you can assume but then when you are asking some question i mean, um, uh, i am i am responding it, it's uh, very gently because i am in relaxed state i am in steady state correct but when i am excited state i am unstable state that time if you ask me anything whether i will respond or react there is a word called respond and react if i respond you it's very good very steady situation but if you are asking something if i am reacting you it 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 may hurt you so that when i start to react based on your command or based on your question that is called the transient to handle that transient is difficult so to know that 
you have to uh, you have to learn me you have to identify me that's why you see for for dating and all people are going for dating uh, years together to model his partner how uh, he or she will be behaving so that the the, the situation can be tackled uh, in a, a better manner okay so from the time domain data how to how to learn the frequency domain transfer function i don't know why this kind of things are coming suddenly okay so today what is it this so today i have uh, taken one practical example um, and i will be telling you say there is a a pipeline i don't know how many people are from mechanical background or whether all you are from control and electronics that i don't know so uh, say there is a pipeline big pipeline say our uh, that uh, water is coming from that south side that uh, that south side one reservoir is there extreme after pondicherry after chidambaram one reservoir is there from there the water is coming to uh, chennai this is the, that that is the sweet water that is the one of the main source of water so to control the flow there is some valve butterfly valve normally when you need uh, when uh, when your valve is in flow control mode so normally people use butterfly valve so what will happen you can assume you can assume say flow is a uh, full flow is coming the valve is fully open suddenly if i close <coughs> what will happen the flow will restrict suddenly the flow will become zero if that situation comes then suddenly there is a raise of pressure the pipeline will uh, ah yeah yeah viranam lake yeah 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 i went uh, some f uh, few months before so uh, so suddenly that um, uh, flow uh, there will be pressure impulse this pressure impulse can damage the pipe which is called water hammering that's why in uh, hydel power plant there will be a pen stock uh, in the pen stock there will be a surge tank but pipeline naturally there is no surge tank so designer after doing the hydraulic analysis the designer told the relative travel of the valve should settle not less than a particular time if i am giving a command say now my valve is 90% open due to some reason i want to close it to 50% so i given the command but your that should not reflect at the output say below 3 second before 3 second otherwise that impulse whatever impulse will come that will break the pipeline so when this kind of conditions are there i cannot operate the system uh, open loop definitely i have to take the feedback and from there i have to design a regulator or compensator which can cater the situation there should not be any impulse 
so when these kind of things are there normally the control engineer the control engineer will try to consider the system as critically damped it's a thumb rule it will be critically damped even though i don't know the natural frequency you need not to know also that technique only i will be telling you so in my lab i have one small demonstration system even though it's very small on pipelining small pipelining is there maybe uh, three or four meter so i captured the data i captured the data in open loop then <coughs> from there from that data i will uh, try to um, i will try to uh, identify the system that means the transfer function so what i did i given the valve command i have given because that is operated through a solenoid valve the stroke of the valve is controlled that means uh, the relative travel of the valve is controlled by solenoid valve and the solenoid valve is controlled by a controller whose input is 4 to 20 milliamps so i have taken that and with that data we will try to uh, establish the transfer function of the system or plant so you open the so the the uh, actually in industry people follow the same technique what i am going to show you so this data i have stored in the csv file i give a written as pd3 okay so first you read it i am defining a variable then i am reading it my system is very damn slow so <coughs> it may take some time but the thing what i am telling you when you will be working or people who are working in industry you can follow the same method and you will get a very good result because this is my regular practice to tune the system first i will make the system open loop using a data logger because the occurrence of transient i know because that will be uh, given by the designer of the system so i will ask the what is what is your uh, transient time so i will take uh, the sampling time minimum 1 by 1000 or 10000 and i will capture the data and from there i will estimate the I have some thumb rule <coughs> how many pole and zero will be there in that particular if it is a flow loop you know flow rpm those are the very and the uh, <coughs> thermal loop those are very slow loop why i am telling if you if you increase the suddenly increase the enthalpy impulsive way if you increase the enthalpy but your temperature will not change in that in in impulsive manner means i am telling say suddenly this room here the uh, energy is a thousand zul so within one millisecond i increase that enthalpy to uh, ten thousand joule whether my temperature will increase in one millisecond no it will take it is much more slower than that so that's why it's slow process very steady process so now here the uh, in that uh, csv file because uh, if i open the csv file um, uh, system will become slow that's why i have not opened i opened earlier but i closed it so the third column is the input 
so x is third column all row and my output is and here i have used the sampling time of 10 microsecond you should have that that kind of data logger so this is my output i got in workspace you see in the left side in the workspace it is there x and y has come now you type you open the system identification toolbox then you import the data you go to it's a time domain data then your input is x and your output is y and here i started time zero and my sampling time is 10 microsecond 10 microsecond import the data now you go to the esti estimate there are a lot of models are there i am going to transfer function model so now it's very important to understand how the system so you know for such kind of flow flow loop where it will be that that flow is controlled by valve there are some standard books are there i will tell you later so in this case there is no zero and there will be a single pole it's a first first order system that means so it will be by your practice we will be knowing which will be first order system who will be second order system higher order system and all these things and there is some technique to reduce the higher order system because that higher order system effect will increase the transient so you, have, you should know some optimization from higher order to lower order when we will be tuning our vector control drive all the three pi regulators we will by some fair approximation we will be converting the higher order system to first order system so that when we will be introducing the pi regulator the closed loop transfer function will become a second order system which is omega n square divided by s square plus 2 j omega n s plus omega n square and we will be assuming some uh, thumb rule for the natural frequency for the natural frequency of the each loop and we will be considering the system as critically damped to make it very much stable and we will be tuning the thing okay so for this there will be no zeros and there will be single pole it is a first order system now if you simply click the estimate it will estimate is <clears throat> till the estimation is going on this this button the stop button will be red don't press that button see now that uh, red button become it is become it is disabled so now you close it you close this you see there is one transfer function tf1 came you right click on that you see my transfer function is here so that is 5 by 0.1s plus 1 okay if you divide by 50 by 10 that is 5 actually that was the transfer function <coughs> so 
so this is the way to estimate the transfer function for any 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 system you can first make it open loop and you you should know the transient because while operating the open loop transient should not damage the sy system so you should get the information about the transient and accordingly you can set your excitation and you can capture the time domain data and you should have a knowledge about the order of the system and how many poles and zeros will be there and if you feed it in here in this in this way i have shown you you can obtain the uh, system transfer function so once i obtain the system transfer function then i have made i have opened the simulink and you see i have written the transfer function as point, uh, 0.5 by 0 0.1 is plus 1 i have used one pi regulator given the step function and and for this one configuration you should remember this will be always uh, better to follow i don't know what kind of configuration you are familiar but i i i i used to follow this configuration that i am going to show you you see here i have used so this time should be whatever the how, how much time you take in the data that should be there you select as five select as fixed step and the solver you use Rang, rangi kutta and uh, the step size you whatever the sampling time you see i have used sampling time of 10, 10 microsecond i have used the same here okay now you in the pid i don't know so that's why i keep it one one now if i run the system So I, uh, this, this is not a good result suddenly it is going up you see this is very fast so for this system it this settling time should not be less than one second but it is like this so how to tune that because if if it is settled by uh, if if the valve is settled with my input reference relative travel before one second then that hammering will come the pressure will increase so i should not do that so i need to tune it so you need not to do anything you just open that pi regulator there is an option called tune you click on tune my uh, see as i told yesterday unless otherwise you are linearizing the plant you cannot able to tune so the same job is uh, doing by matlab it's first linearizing the plant sorry my system is uh, very slow
it's taking more time you see now one graphical <coughs> display has come and you see there is some overshoot and this kind of things are there so let us there is a there are two slider on the top one is aggressive another is robust what do you mean by robust robust design is say say one example I can give for robust design robust you see for robust design I can tell the uh, you can take salwar salwar dress so when you are going to purchase a salwar so you need you, you should have its size and all and everything instead of instead of that if i purchase a sari i need not to bother about the uh, so many other things sari one uh, 18 years girl also can use one 65 years lady also can use so this is the sari is a robust design whereas uh, salwar is a aggressive design so as the first slider is the slower uh, is the uh, response time so as we know that it should not be settled below one second so try to make it slower you see i will take it around one second you see this is my one second this is my one second okay then you can make it robust or aggressive so you adjust <coughs> okay it's become much much slower so just to adjust And you update the block <clears throat> you see i have got the gain proportional gain and the integral gain the same thing you feed in your controller which is in field so your job is finished your job is finished and i am telling you most of the industry will do this job only this this way only you see now my response is very nice and it is not settling it is it is settling after after two seconds only before one second nothing will happen it is slowly going so that it is not allowing <coughs> to happen that thermal hammering so hope this example is useful will be useful for you to uh, estimate the system transfer function from the time domain data and by considering the design requirement and the operating requirement how to tune the pi rather than going the trial and error there is a lot of method that uh, kuhen kuhn then uh, that uh, jiggler nichols all these things we studied but <coughs> in industry you need to do it very quickly so using this technique i have tuned lot of system perfectly i have tuned so that my experience i have shared with you now i am going to the second part of today's lecture so this is a commercial variable frequency drive it's the manufacturer is schneider electric 
even though i am not promoting any particular product but i feel this will be <coughs> there are a lot of drives available in the market commercially siemens uh general electric mitsubishi wacon uh delta rockwell so many things are there but i have arbitrarily i have taken this uh, drive to tell you about that so this model number is altivar 312 this is this is the drive it will looks like so today we will be learning how to what about the connection and how to configure this drive in v by f control mode okay so this front side this is this is you see this is one potential uh, this is a uh, this is a knob by rotating it you can do the parameterization of the drive so first i am coming to the electrical connection yes time is uh, this is the electrical connection so these are the uh, three phase input l1 l2 l3 that means r y b will be connected with that this is the input supply and you see there is a u v w that will be connected to the motor and in between that p a and p b the braking register will be uh, connected if you want to do that but if you some <coughs> some people this is for electrical braking but normally for safe purpose we will also use some brake which will be connected with the non driving end of the machine okay or in between the coupling where the motor is connected with gearbox or something like that there will be using a separate pulley and there will be a brake shoe that brake is uh, normally close normally close condition through the brake shoe and that that uh, brake shoe will be loaded with some spring with desired uh, uh, spring constant that is depend on your braking action you can calculate it the brakes are maybe thruster brake or electromagnetic brake again if it is electromagnetic brake then it will be released by the electromagnet once the supply is going to the coil of the electromagnet then there will be disc which will be attracted by the magnet which will oppose the spring preloading and that will release the brake similar way in case of thruster brake inside there will be some oil again inside there will be some motor with the disc it will be rotating with very high speed and centrifugally that oil will go and hit on the disc of the brake and due to that pressure the brake will oppose the preloading of spring and it will <coughs> and it will uh, it will release the brake so when that brake should release the brake should only release say this machine is this drive is used for uh, used for a um, uh, crane application hoisting application so the brake should not release till the machine is able to develop the rated torque so for that you see there are some few contacts are given ra1 ra1c and all these things so if i take this two contact this two this two contact <coughs> then normally it is open and if i configure these two contacts such a way that after elapsing the acceleration time you know what is acceleration time acceleration time is the time when the machine is developed machine is machine reached the commanded speed and it will be able to deliver the rated torque that time if that contact is closed and the coil supply for the brake contactor is connected through this then once the uh, rated torque is achieved then this through this contact the contactor of the brake supply will be enabled 
and this will release the brake okay here we will be using first because i cannot show you physically because that setup is not here it is in my lab we will be using that ai1 analog input one here we will be connected one potentiometer for speed reference see the the drive has inbuilt 10 volt so one end of the potentiometer will connected to 10 volt and another end will be connected to this com port com end and the variable point will be connected to ai1 and here we will be using two wire control li1 and li2 i will tell you the parameterization so this is <coughs> all about the electrical connection okay now i am coming to the programming of the drive quick programming because today will be so lot of things are there i am not going here so first we will be learning this is the motor control okay so if you go to that menu because this page is 42 so in that by pressing this this can be pressed if you press this button it is work as a enter and if you rotate it clockwise and anti clockwise the parameter parameter will appear in that display a particular parameter appear in the display then you press enter you will go inside the parameter okay this is the way so <coughs> these are the parameter bfr the parameter name this is the standard motor frequency so ours is 50 hertz so straightforward you do the connection as i told you power on the drive and go for this parameterization straight so you enter the motor frequency at 50 hertz because our power frequency is 50 hertz then go to uns that is motor rated voltage <coughs> that is our things is 415 volt <coughs> rated motor frequency that is also in our case 50 hertz ncr that is motor rated current that you give from the nameplate the motor rated speed that is also available in the that is the full load speed that is also available in the uh, motor nameplate the power factor also given in the motor nameplate and the cold stator resistance that is also given the uh, motor data sheet here we will we'll be not going for any tuning because we will be going we will be operating for uh, open loop mode okay <coughs> then you go, come straight forward here you save the configuration your things are is done now once one thing is required what type of control it will be whether it will be uh, two wire control or three wire control that part only is remaining so here you see there is a things i told in the electrical connection here this li1 and li2 which is connected to which will be connected through a, a relay or switching device if you close this then the 24 volt will come in that point so here you see this is the thing so li1 it is for forward and you can configure that li2 x means any so many other things are there so we'll be using this configuration if 24 volt is coming to li1 it will be forward which is by by default and you can configure other li 
as reverse okay then you go to <coughs> selection of speed reference so we are using the potentiometer so there it is i will show you where it is these things practically i am trying to show i will i will try to bring one drive one day to pantech and i will try to once definitely this pandemic is over and the situation will be under control that time i will uh, plan a practical class to show you so that you can learn and you can apply it in your uh, while you will be working so there will be a parameter i am not able to find out anyway time is also over today so but there is a parameter where you can select the analog input you see this is the analog input one you can configure as a speed reference if you do that then you power up you select forward or reverse then you rotate the potentiometer your motor speed will be varying so <coughs> this was all about today's class so i tried to give you some practical aspect and uh, i shared my experience how i used to perform in the industry hope it will be uh, useful to all of you now one or two minutes you can oh whatsapp number okay kindly share enter sir i try to film that okay okay now uh, today this is over any question is there you can ask Is there any question or uh, I can uh, close the session? The data sheet is for LTVAR 312. LTVAR 312. This is the model you see. LTVAR You see, this is that data sheet which uh, this is the value which I locked. If I plot it.
it is coming like this something Revive control can able to increase the speed above. <coughs> you see that I told. If you do that, the machine will be over flux, fluxed, over fluxed. Uh, sorry, it will be under fluxed. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you are correct only. That's why I'm telling it will be motor will not able to deliver the torque, edited torque. This uh, drive, uh, uh, this practical thing, I will, uh, I am planning to conduct as I told. These things I will be conducting. Uh, The form disturb me very much and I can't focus on the lecture. What form? I don't know. Actually, <coughs> this, uh, this, um, with this drive, I want to uh, conduct this physically. The people who are nearer to Chennai, they can physically attend it. Otherwise, I will request the uh, Mr. Malayappan to telecast means through youtube live the actual physical that that things should be uh, done once this pandemic is over any other question So hope uh, <coughs> you have understood. So I'll be terminating.